Welcome back to the Enneagram Health Series. Today, we're diving into Enneagram Type 7s. Now, I love a good Enneagram Type 7, and I think most of the world does, but there's so much more depth to a 7 than just having fun. And that's what we're going to learn about today on how to get healthy based on your Enneagram type. This is the Made for Living Well podcast, hosted by Alexa Sherm, the place to create a life well lived. Welcome back to this podcast. As always, my name's Alexa, and this is the place where I believe you were made for living well, which means health is inside of you and you just have to learn how to live that out. Now, as I study for this entire Enneagram series, there's one thing that I learned that I found so fascinating, and that was the original definition of self-care. I know an Enneagram 7 loves a good bath bomb and massage and hot soaking session, but the reality is is self-care is so much more than that. It might have evolved to that, but underneath the surface, self-care in its original definition meant to know thyself. And really, if we understand that, that is the goal and the purpose of the Enya Health series. And really, it's the secret to health. To know yourself so deeply that you understand what your body needs and you work not to change your body, but to support it. And there's a big difference there. And inside today's podcast, I'm going to teach Enneagram Type 7s how to support their body, their minds, and their souls, their entire health to truly live it out. I'm so excited for this. And if you want more information and you love this episode, and I know Enneagram Type 7s loves all the guides, you can head on over to thelivingwell.com and download the specific guide for Enneagram Type 7s and all the other Enneagram types over there. I highly recommend you check it out. And while you're there, don't forget to check out The Nourish Planner, which is a great tool and asset in your everyday life. It's an everyday planner that's going to help plan your life, your schedules, create to-do lists, which is something you actually do appreciate, and also maintain a healthy perspective and picture of what it means to live out health by creating meal plans, batch cooking guides, and monthly challenges that keep you focused and engaged on supporting your body. Plus, it helps you to create fun and live in your everyday. Make sure you check that out over at thelivingwell.com. I think you're really going to love it. Now, before we get into today's episode, I do want to remind you that we are sponsoring Compassion International on the series. Yes, instead of having the traditional sponsor sponsor the podcast, we're twisting the tables and I'm working together with you to sponsor a nonprofit called Compassion International. They provide support and aid to children all over the world, and it's a great way to interact and to give back with other children who need help getting the proper education, food, and shelter, and that's what Compassion works to do via your support. Now, you can go over to Compassion, you can find a child in need, and you can work together month by month to support these children. And also, in the process, you get to write letters back and forth to each other. Not only is it just a matter of giving, but you get to build a relationship with them. And that is what I love the most. My family has had the best time doing this, and that is why I want to encourage you to join in and helping other people all around the world to live their best life. You can learn more at thelivingwell.com backslash compassion. Definitely worth checking out. But for now, I want to get right to Enneagram type seven and learn what does it take to get healthy? Now, we all love the Enneagram seven, right? Because they're the entertainer, they're the fun loving, Go lucky people that are just a a joy to be around. Like they make the world a more fun, laughter filled place. And really that is their goal in life because a seven is working diligently to overcome pain. Their biggest fear is pain and therefore they work very hard to avoid that at all costs. And in most cases, they take a very surface level spin to that and twist it into something happy or into a joke or whatever that looks like. So sevens really do have a unique ability to light up the room. They value joy and variety and envisioning how to make the world a more delightful place. Now, my sister is an Enneagram 7, and she really is a true joy to be around. But as I was starting to study the Enneagram Type 7, I literally got stuck with the health practices. 
Because the problem with an Enneagram type seven, and what I see as one of their greatest strengths, which is also their greatest weakness, is they have this inability to want to feel any sort of pain, which can be great, but it can also be a hindrance because on some level, discipline requires some amount of pain. And I don't mean physical pain, but I mean, there's a mental strain to that. Like there's a struggle sometimes with that. Like it takes work on the other side. And so I was working through this. I really did. I was like, I I don't even know how to tell an Enneagram 7 how to get healthy. Like it's mind boggling to me. And so she gave me some ideas and we actually worked through the handout together as she is a 7. Now, here's what I know about her specifically, and I think that this is pretty common with all sevens, is that you like the idea of health, but the process that it takes to get there seems too overwhelming, especially in the moment. So sevens are really great at starting something, but the execution is a little bit on the weaker side, right? Like actually finishing something is something that sevens really struggle with. And part of the reason this is, is because sevens are really high energy people. On the Enneagram, they're one of the numbers with the highest energy, which is really great. But in that energy, sevens like to stay really, really busy. And they stay busy and they multitask and they layer things on top of other things. And part of this is just simply because they have so much energy and they are terrified of boredom or of loneliness or stillness because there they might experience pain or there something might get brought up in their own head or in their own mind that they actually need to deal with. And so they avoid that through multitasking and taking their energy out on a multitude of projects. Well, again, this can be a huge asset. It can also be a huge detriment because in this multitasking, which what we know is no one can actually multitask well, there's too much context switching switching, and it actually decreases your productivity. Therefore, most people don't end up finishing anything. And that's what we see most with sevens. And so sevens become these very, I'll start on Monday people, (laughs) the ones who like jump on board with a diet, but because it's not perfect and they failed or they ate something um, just because it was enjoyable or out of gluttony, then they all of a sudden just feel like they just failed today and they'll start again tomorrow. Um, Or I'll start again on Monday. That's very common thought with Enneagram type sevens. And part of this is, is again, they're great pain avoiders. And in order to avoid pain, they like fun things. They like things that taste good. They like to live in the moment. They're very spontaneous, very adventurous. And they also don't quite see that there's any sort of problem going on. So there's a lot going on with sevens, which is really, really great. But also, how can we channel all of that greatness and those strengths in the right direction to move in the direction that I really believe you want to go, even though you tend to be fairly confident people? In fact, sevens are one of the most confident on the Enneagram number, which I think is very, very awesome and, and really cool. And in fact, they also don't often pay attention to their own bodies. So it's kind of... um. It's kind of this battle of like Enneagram type sevens don't even really recognize that there's any sort of problem or any sort of need to actually achieve health or work towards health because they think they're really good the way that they are, which again is really great. But I think in time and in in the way that some sevens transition their life, it can lead to foods that just taste really good, like sugary foods and high fat foods and really comfort foods and do a lot of those kind of spur of the moment things that add up over time. Not to mention exercise is often lacking in an an Enneagram 7 just because exercise is equated with pain or some level of like pain and exertion that an Enneagram 7 doesn't necessarily love, but is really healthy for that. So as I was talking to my sister, she recommended this video And as we bring all of that information that I just told you to light, I want to share something that I learned on the video that makes complete sense. And I hope that it helps transition your mindset because what we see about Enneagram 7s is they're super confident. They don't necessarily see a problem and maybe there's not a problem, which is great. But I I think on the flip side, we all want to work to be healthier, right? And so how does an Enneagram 7 take their confidence and who they are and actually work to make that healthier, not in a painful, unpleasant way, but in a way that just honors and loves their body. Because I think sometimes in this pain avoidant place, sevens can 
work to avoid their body by abusing their body, by being a gluttony, by um, abusing it with drugs or pain with drugs and alcohol, abusing it with sugar. So there's a lot of um, quote unquote abuse that a seven can put on their body. But on the flip side, I think if we kind of start to get the mindset right, these transitions will be a little bit easier than they are difficult. But again, threes aren't overly disciplined, so we really have to kind of merge this gap. But to go back to the video, so what I learned on this video was that while sevens don't really look at their body and see that there's a problem, one way that we can get a seven to actually start to maybe get away from these addictions to food or to sugar or whatever you're addicted to and step into health is to recognize the pain that's associated with that behavior. So alcohol is a good one to use because there's an immediate reaction to that, right? So a lot of Enneagram 7s, once they start to associate that there's a hangover the next day, that there's pain associated with drinking too much, a lot of 7s, while they love to be social and they love to be outgoing and try all the things, they actually are really great about holding back or holding, staying true to what they know is going to prevent the pain. So in that case, the negative behavior that triggered the immediate pain was avoided not because they had to, but because they wanted to, to avoid that pain. So is that making sense? You know, like it's, it's basically saying that a seven should associate their behavior today with whatever it's going to produce. So starting to look at your life and think, okay, I do a lot of this. Is it beneficial? Is it going to help me feel good long-term or is it going to cause a pain or a consequence? So the same thing, like I was talking with my sister, I'm going to use her a lot in this example, as I try to understand sevens, she loves sugar. Like she always says, I sh- I need to go to rehab for sugar. I just love it so much. Like it's spur of the moment. It's fun. I usually do it in social situations. Like I just love sugar. And so one thing that we talked about, so to understand and utilize this mindset shift is to understand, okay, I might love the taste of sugar, but I don't like the bloated feeling or the way that it's making me feel in the aftermath of that. So while I can have some sugar, just like alcohol, I need to know my limit with that. Like I need to know where's the point in which I no longer feel good doing it and start to associate that there's pain with our actions towards our health. So I hope that's just one way to maybe start to shift these ideas and these thought patterns that are going on in a seven's mind. In addition to that, and the way that sevens are very high energy people, when they're not expending their energy and they have this sit in stillness, this energy kind of builds up in their brain or their bodies and it creates anxiety. So sevens tend to be a little bit more anxious people. Again, they're in the head triad, which means that they're more fear-based. And so sevens are just, again, high energy. And when they don't expend that energy and they're just sitting in it, bored in it, then they start to feel the the pain and the pressure and the anxiousness. Even if there's nothing to be anxious about, sevens will fixate on something and make it a problem in their life. Again, I think some of it is to avoid the pain of, of their past, which they really have no intent of bringing up or dealing with, because that seems absurd. My sister actually said those words to me. Why? What's the point? It doesn't seem necessary. But it really is because it's in these moments of high energy when you have um, so much energy that your body almost becomes anxious through it that you don't know how to expend that other than fixating on something and becoming anxious about it, even though there's nothing to be truly anxious about. So a good way to do this is to prevent the anxiety. If you're a seven who has this high anxiety, fear-based kind of mentality, which I suppose kind of goes with different wings, but is to know that a seven needs to expend energy throughout the day. So while exercise can be associated with pain, it can also be associated with lessening the pain of the anxiety from not moving your body. You really do have a lot of energy that needs to be burned in a day. And yes, you're probably doing this with your job and being creative and doing all those things, but it really, really is so important for a seven to exercise. Even more than eating well, I think a seven really needs to focus on moving their bodies and expending some energy because you're over-energized to almost a chronic level and you need to even that out, like to even your energy load out so that you're more even mentally, you're more even um, in what you do, and you're more likely to sit in your stillness or to recognize what's going on around you, creating that awareness. So more than 
eating well, which I think because a seven loves to multitask, they also love the all or none approach, right? Sevens often are the ones who look at diet and lifestyle changes and think I need to do it all and I need to do it all right now. But that is completely untrue and it really self-sabotage a seven because multitasking is not a healthy thing for you, even though you love to do it. So instead of focusing so much on every health aspect, I'd want you to pick one. And if I had to pick one for you, it would be the physical act of movement. Just focus on moving your body, getting into a routine with that. And I think through that, your eating habits um, and your other lifestyle practices will pick up. Like a seven is, uh, again, pain avoidant and deeply aware of their body. They just have to pay attention to that and to utilize that and to trust that, like to gain that trust through their body and to be fully confident. And so again, kind of going back to that is to pick something like exercise and do it. Again, working to achieve or maintain like an even energy throughout the day, lessening the anxiety, helping you to make better choices, to really just even you out and just make you overall just calmer. But how do we get an Enneagram 7 to actually embrace the idea of exercise? Again, being pain avoidant people who just love to have fun and be spontaneous and do whatever feels good in the moment, it's really hard to grasp this idea of exercise. So there are a few ways that you can do this. Knowing that you're very relational people, you are great candidates to sign up for a group class, take your buddies to, maybe it's dance class or or yoga or Pilates, that's something that you really enjoy. On the flip side, sevens need to find time alone. One of the healthiest things for a seven is to actually sit in solitude or their boredom to recognize that the pain that they think is there is actually not that painful and can help them in the end. That's a really big lie that sevens tend to tell themselves that there's no point in sitting in the pain because it's going to cause more pain. But the truth is, is once you start to learn that that pain isn't so bad, you can start to trust the process of really uncovering and starting to listen to yourself. But that takes sitting in it. So one way to kind of sit in your pain while expending energy is actually through movement by yourself. So whether you go for a run in the morning by yourself or a walk in the morning by yourself, those are great things to help you expend energy, but also to be mindful of just yourself. That means no music, but just really sitting with yourself or using music half the time and at the end, maybe just following with five or 10 minutes of just nothingness while you move your body. Now, I recommend doing it while you exercise because when you're just sitting there trying to sit in stillness, like we hear sevens need to sit in stillness but you can easily become distracted and the pain can almost be too much for you to bear or the fear of the pain can almost be too much for you to bear that you pick up your phone and you let little things distract you or your housework. So being outside and moving your body can actually be a quiet distraction without actually distracting you, if that makes sense, like a physical distraction so you're not apt to do other things, but also forcing you into stillness. And nature is just really healing in general. So those are some good tips. Again, I want you to really focus on movement over exercise and get into the rhythm of that. Considering you like to multitask and do everything at once, it's really, really important for a seven to pick one thing, just one thing and focus on that one thing. And also in that one thing, choosing to stay in it long enough that you achieve it. Sevens are like the dog who sees the squirrel and they see one thing and then another thing and another thing and they kind of jump around. Even though sevens are super intelligent, highly creative visionaries, it's hard for a seven to stay in any one place too long, even though they crave security and all the things that come with that. But in their minds, they're constantly jumping around. And so as a seven, I think in health, it's important to pick one thing, even if it's um, eating well or just eating breakfast or just setting your alarm and actually waking up at that time, regardless of if you work out or not. I think it's important to pick one small thing and make sure you stay in it long enough to achieve it. You have to start training your body and teaching your mind that you can achieve the things that you set out to do. And in that achievement, it will actually start to change your brain in a more positive spin, helping you to believe things that you didn't once think you could. Like take the focus off of what you should and shouldn't be doing and just going back to that one thing that you know is going to help make you feel good and kind of create these new healthy rhythms that you can establish through that. But at the same time, it's important for a seven to enjoy what they do or to learn to enjoy it. 
Because if a seven doesn't like it and if it's painful or boring, they're not going to stick with it. And we have to get you to stick with it. And so I want you to start relating, like get out of your mind that health is boring or that it's painful or it's restrictive or depriving. Like, yes, certainly things that are in health and much of the health world tells you that. But the reality is, is when you just start to listen to your body, like to stop and understand what is my body trying to tell me? and you start to implement this stuff, I want you to also remember that this can be enjoyable. Like it can be fun. It's not about just doing right and wrong. That's a really dangerous mindset for an Enneagram type seven to be in. But it's more about what makes me feel good and how can I find a way to enjoy it? So as this relates to food, I want you to think about what foods do I love and what is also going to nourish my body? Like I know it's 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 common thought that Diet foods are boring foods and health foods are bland. But the truth of the matter is, is that healthy, wholesome foods can taste really, really, really delicious. And given you like bold flavors and you like variety, it's going to be important to include this into your diet. Like in the presence of healthy food, you will eat it, especially if it has a lot of flavor. So I want you to start thinking diet wise, like how can I choose the healthy option that provides bold flavor? At home, how can I have the healthy option on hand so that I will choose it and provides bold flavor? So for a seven, it's probably not as much about meal planning because that seems really stiff and rigid and you might fall off of that. But how can you just have some staples in your refrigerator that can create healthy food and make it bold? Maybe it's salad dressings. Maybe it's staples that you can layer together to change up your foods over time. Like the batch cooking basics guide is super beneficial and powerful for you. I'm going to link that in the show notes. So stay tuned for that. But this idea of batch cooking is that you make a grain, you make a salad, you make a protein, you make a dressing and a vegetable, and you just have these separate ingredients in your refrigerator. And then throughout the week, you can layer those or use those for dinners so that you always have healthy food on hand. Because what's awesome about a seven is if healthy food is there, you will eat it. You just don't want to have to overthink it or over plan it because that's where you stumble and that's where you fall. So don't make any of this too difficult. And on the same side, make it enjoyable that you actually like it and want to stick with it. So really, the big point that I want to give a seven is don't just settle for good because it's right in front of you. But know if you keep going, you're going to feel great. And that's the biggest hurdle that I see sevens take is that they just settle for good because it's here, that instant gratification, rather than using their vision, using your vision for understanding, okay, what does healthy look like for me? And how can I keep going even when good's right in front of me? How can I keep going knowing that I can feel great if I just stick with it? So think about that. Use your vision for what does health look like for me? And then start to put into practice and implement those things that will help you get there. So a few other health things that Enneagram Type 7s can do besides for the ones that I listed is, again, just reiterate this one. Sevens need to learn to sit in stillness, whether it's walk in stillness or run in stillness or just sit in it. Yes, boredom is a scary place for a seven, but this is where healing happens. And I promise it's not as painful as a fear of being in pain. (laughs) So don't let that stop you. Other things are to stop multitasking, to recognize that distraction is the name of your game. And while you have a lot of great ideas, just pick one thing from all the things that I've told you and try that out. Like just get good at that. Don't worry about anything else and just see what comes from it. So again, going back to what I recommend is focusing on exercise over eating. Again, along with daily solitude. Other things that are really great for sevens is you're really relational people. So connect with someone you love and not just like the surface level connection. I like you until I don't or I like you until you just get close enough to me and then I have to leave you like this um, very in and out kind of relationship. But I want you to focus on the people that you really do love. And as it comes back with daily solitude, some other things that can help you sit in silence or create more time to just do that one thing and put more emphasis is to under schedule your life. Yes, we know you love signing up for all the things and you're the social butterfly and you love being with people and doing all the things and you struggle with FOMO. But here's the reality. Your health and your life is more important than anything anyone else is doing, even if it looks fun. 
Because sometimes you'll get yourself into so many situations that you'll become so overwhelmed that you do become anxious and unhealthy. So sevens, you have to learn to underschedule your life or at least schedule nights where you just stay in, where you don't do anything. And I think in this process, you're gonna start to learn what is healthy for me and what isn't healthy for me. You're gonna start to kind of break down the norm of how a seven and unhealth works and you're gonna start to work to be a healthier seven, um, which is focused and um, disciplined. So learn practices and principles that can help you under schedule your life, even if it just means taking an entire day off, um, saying no to Friday nights of going out, just staying in, using Saturdays to go out and do all the things. But that can be really important. And when it comes to even scheduling, brain dumps can be really great for a seven. You're a thinker, right? You're in your head. You have lots of thoughts going on. So taking time to get those thoughts out of your head and on paper can help you make sense of them And again, not fear them. So what I mean by this is just literally take out a piece of paper every single week and write everything and anything that comes to mind. It might make sense. It might be something that doesn't make sense. It might be a list that you need to do, things that you need to accomplish. Whatever it is, take it out of your head and put it on paper. And that simple process of clearing space, again, helps you to more even out your energy level and decrease some of your anxiety. And just keep doing those brain dumps and then taking that information and either setting it aside, scheduling it into your life, creating a to-do list so you can actually go out and accomplish that. For a seven, an important aspect is accomplishing said task, (laughs) sticking with something to build that trust that you can stick with things and finish things. That's really where we want a seven to go. And then, like I said, make it enjoyable. Like find flavors of food that you enjoy. Find um, something that you enjoy to get yourself back in the kitchen or in the kitchen. I know a lot of sevens who don't like to cook or bake, and I think it's because it's a brutal task for them. But what if you can make that fun and enjoyable? Maybe you start by baking because that's fun and you get something good on the other side of it. But really start to get yourself acquainted with the kitchen so that you can pull things together. Not an effort to be a five-star chef or anything, but really just to be able to trust yourself and your body and, and to believe that you can get in there and you can have fun making healthy food. So make sure that health is fun and not a painful, highly disciplined process all the time. Because if it's, if you're constantly equating in your mind that health is pain, health is restriction, health is starvation, you won't stick with it. Like you won't. That's what a seven doesn't like. And so you have to start associating that in health, you have more fun. In health, you have uh, more even energy to be able to go out and to explore. In health, you have a new trust and a new confidence for yourself. So health can bring a lot of things to a seven that a seven really does crave. You just have to be willing to find ways to make it enjoyable, all while still pushing through some of the pain and the discipline that it takes to get there. And the last thing I think for a seven is use your visualization. Sevens are highly visual, very creative people. And sometimes that can get lost in the nitty gritty of daily life. But I really wonder what would happen if you visualize what health looks like for you, not what it looks like for the shape bottle or not what it looks like for your friend or for your mother-in-law or for whoever it is. But what does health look like for you? Not in society standards of what size you need to be or what, how many pounds you need to weigh, but what does it look like for you? And I want you to write that vision out. Like I really, really want you to create a a vision for what health looks like for you because it might not look like you think it looks and that might take an enormous amount of pressure off of you. Like maybe health isn't as far away as you think it is and maybe it doesn't involve all these crazy steps and all this discipline. But maybe health is just really right in front of you. Like it's only a few steps away. So over in the handout that I created for you, I have all the information to help you do this. Like to help you create a vision for what health looks like for you and how you can align your daily life to fit inside that vision. Like what we need you to do is to learn and trust yourself enough that you can set a vision and you can achieve a vision that you don't have to fall off. It might have been your pattern in the past, but it certainly doesn't have to be your pattern anymore. And the best way to do that is to find enjoyment in that, to take the stress and the pressure off of the all or none mindset 
and really just start to take those healthy, positive steps toward that vision. I really believe in you sevens. And um, while that wasn't like a ton of super specific, eat this, not that, what a seven usually gravitates towards initially, I mean, it's a little more vague, but I hope it opens you up to be creative and to use this information to open yourself up to the possibility that health is easier than you ever thought possible and it's not that far away. So make sure you download that handout and start to work through it. I have some journaling prompts to ask you kind of deep questions about why, what pains are you scared of and why are you scared of them? Like really trying to draw this process out that maybe all the things you think of in your head are worse than the reality of what they could bring for you. So download that. There's more than just that deep stuff that I know you don't want to do. And chances are of you reading this are going to be a miracle in itself. But I really promise it's not that much information, even if you just skim through it. But at the end, take the time to do the journaling prompts. Let that be your first step of solitude, of learning about yourself and what it is you really desire and start to implement that. So I want you to use that and break that down and really come up with your own idea of what health is and start to implement just one thing, one, only one thing. Like if you do more, you're failing this, right? One thing a day that will align with that and get really good at it before you implement something else. There is something to that snowball effect, you know, where you implement just one healthy thing and it kind of snowballs into more and more and more things without you even recognizing it. That's what I think that will happen to you if you just say focus on this and use your confidence, build yourself up that you really are an amazing individual with amazing skill sets. Now it's just time to stay focused and use them. Okay, that's it for the Enneagram 7. Later on this week, my sister is coming on the show to be interviewed about what it's like to be an Enneagram 7. We talk through more of her health struggles and hurdles that she's overcome And really, I just challenged her to see what what would work for you, not what I think will work, but what is going to work for you. So stay tuned if you want more encouragement and ideas as an Enneagram type seven or someone who just wants to support and encourage other Enneagram types. If you're listening to all the Enneagram numbers, I mean, kudos to you. This is what we should all be doing. It's not just learning about ourselves, but about every Enneagram type so that we can better serve the world around us. So thank you so much for listening in. Stay tuned for another episode in the India Health series. I so appreciate you. Don't forget, you can find the guide on Enneagram Type 7s and all the other Enneagram types, plus more information over at The Living Well. And while you're there, one thing I think all Enneagram 7s could use is a great planner. I have created the perfect planner for Enneagram Type 7s called the Nourish Planner that offers plenty of flexibility and white space with a focus on adding fun to your life. It helps you organize your life in a way that you get more done in less time, focus on your health, and really get out and live. So make sure you check that out over at The Living Well as well, and I will see you back here in the next episode with my sister talking all about Enneagram Type 7s.